Senator, welcome to our program. Susan's got the first question. Uh, Senator, you headed up the campaign against Proposal 2, which lifted the ban on stem cell research last year. Um, during that time, you said that there would be no way for the legislature to regulate anything if it passed, but you've now proposed a package of legislation to do just that. So I'm wondering what's changed? Well, nothing's changed. The, the legislature can't undo what was put in the Constitution and can't regulate, oh, for example, a provision was put in saying research can be done up to 14 days of age for an embryo. That can't be changed. But there are some gray areas that need to be filled in. For example, the constitutional provision says that there's a consent requirement, but it doesn't say who gets the consent. Is it the researcher or is it the infertility expert who's doing the treatment? And there are things that need to be clarified and filled in, but we can't undo what was put in the Constitution. Interested in your take on the physician tax that we uh, discussed earlier, uh, you, you being a, a physician yourself, uh, specifically, you know, what kind of impact would it have on Medicaid access and what kind of impact would it have on uh, the number of doctors who, uh, who may or may not uh, uh, leave Michigan as a result of all this? Mark, Medicaid is the issue of the day. What are we going to do about it? We've gone from a million recipients on Medicaid at the beginning of this decade to 1.7 million one in every six Michigan residents. And we're not going to be able to afford it. We, we, we've lost a million jobs. We've gone from five to four million working people. And if you add in the non-Medicaid welfare recipients, we have three million people almost on state aid. If we keep going in this direction, we have more people on state aid than are working. So we need to reform those programs. And dinging the doctors, the hospitals, the providers to support it isn't the answer. We have to reform them because they're not working. And we have to look at the recipients. The thing that determines the cost, the thing that determines the health of a population isn't so much how many doctors and hospitals you have, it's what's the behavior of the recipients. It's, it's uncharted territory. We haven't, we haven't tackled that. And other states are doing it. We need to do it for Medicaid recipients and for state employees. You're going to sit on this bill and committee, right? Well, there are some very serious issues with it. Is it constitutional to pick on one profession? I'm not sure that, that, that it's sustainable over time. You mentioned the enhanced match rate. Well, what happens after the stimulus money is out? That's only connected to the federal stimulus uh, provision. Let me so rephrase that, the question. You're in no out. hurry to move this bill. Uh, there are serious problems with it that need to be addressed. In fact, Hades will freeze before you do. Well, there are other things we ought to do to fix this. This just... This just adds to the well, problem. Well, how do you account for other people in the healthcare community who say this is a great idea? They're wrong. It's not a great idea. It doesn't fix the problem, with it, which is an unhealthy Medicaid population that smokes too much, is not compliant, doesn't take care of itself. And, and it's not just Medicaid. It's state employees. It's all of us. And this is why we can't fund our schools. But, this but is where the money's going. But you're talking about long-term fixes, uh, you know, some, some reforms that, uh, that, that you've been pushing for quite some time. What do we do about uh, the problem with funding Medicaid in the 2010 budget? If we put a Band-Aid on it, we will never get those reforms. This has, been, this has been painted by the administration as, look, you have to either do cuts or this doctor's tax, and I don't believe it. There is no list of reforms on their proposal. That's where we need to go. We need to force that to happen. Or we're going to be right back here in a couple of years, and it's taking money from the schools. The Medicaid piece of the budget is ballooned. And, and that's where the money that should be going to education is going. We have to turn that around. Well, those are two separate pots of money. Well, it's the biggest single expense now within the state budget is health care spending. It used to be education. It used to be education. And if you ask people, they'll say that's the ticket to the future. That's how we make Michigan better. Spending on health care, it's important to provide care to the poor and the disabled, but it doesn't make Michigan more competitive if we're not healthier. Last May, you unveiled this legislation this, to make health care more affordable for the most impoverished part of the population, but we kind of have seen that disappear, and Mark Corvo over in, over in the House had something, and you guys were supposed to be talking, but we haven't heard much about that discussion. Where is that? We've been talking. We meet frequently, and uh, we're making progress. There's a lot of overlap, but what this has to do is with uh, what started as a fight between insurance companies in what's called the individual market, people buying insurance on their own. And we have special rules where Blue Cross has a special <coughs> role 
and they don't pay taxes. They wanted the rules changed. And I, I, what we're trying to do is instead of being referees between insurance companies, what can we do to make insurance more affordable? If we, and I'll give you an example of what might happen. If we can aid or partially relieve Blue Cross's burden, then maybe their tax exemption should be re-examined. Other states have done this. In Pennsylvania, they pay an assessment, and then they use that to cover more people. You're going to put that in the plan? Um, that, that could well be part of the plan. So the Blues lose their tax exemption. Did you just hear that shout from down in Southfield? Well, look, they've, they've been at the table. This is, this is part of the discussion. And you can do it without repealing their tax exemption. It can be an assessment. This is what's done in Pennsylvania. They got help in the market, but in return, they pay an assessment, and that's used to subsidize plans. Have for they the signed off board. on that? It's been in, in the works there for five years. Why haven't we seen uh, reforms ahead of this point, uh, you know, where now we have a Medicaid budget that's in crisis? Well, we've been pushing for them in the Senate, but it takes, the administration has to be the driver of this. This is one of the, one of the opportunities for the next governor. The administration drives it because they have to get waivers. They have to work with the federal government. If they're reticent to do it, it doesn't happen. Senator, with all due respect, you're stuck in the polls at 2% in running for governor. Have you thought about being the LG for somebody else? Uh, no, it's great to be an underdog. That's why we have a campaign. You're ruling out the LG thing completely. Look, it's way Apparently too early. You are not. Well, what, what, we, what, what the Republican Party needs is a broad field new faces, new ideas. I'm the only Republican candidate in the legislature. That's a plus. If you're going to fix Michigan, Rick Snyder says it's not. The legislature. It is. He's wrong. And look, I have business experience. I have a job, a part-time medical practice that I've maintained on the outside. Republicans were for jobs. That's a good thing. And I represent a Democratic district. There aren't too many Republicans. Well, but if it appears that, that you can can't that. get the nomination and one of the others comes to you and said, would you consider it lieutenant governor, you would have to do that. Well, look, the, the, there's a lot of campaigning to do, and the challenge for me is name ID. I'm a good candidate, and I can compete with the others. I have things to offer. We need, Republicans need to have a message for our core cities. I represent a core city. I've been in Detroit. I've ridden my bike all around the Senator, state. Senator, you have 2%. It, it, Tim, it doesn't matter at this time. This, that's why we have a campaign. 